Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to copy from Excel into PowerPoint charts and tables and have them linked. So something like this, if I change Germany, for example, to be 38, I can see that that is changing both here in Excel and also here in PowerPoint. So we're going to go through how to do this with charts, with tables, uh, when you need to copy and paste multiple objects, and also how to do entirely clickable interactive dashboards that you can use to present. So let's get started. Now, unfortunately, this process is not the best. It does need maintenance, but if you know where the things are, it will help you with a lot of what you're trying to achieve. If you want to skip to send parts of this video, look at the chapter links underneath. If I click copy it, and I get these pasting options. So here I have embed, which we'll cover later on, and I also have link, destination start theme or source formatting and embed, these first two. And these ones with the link button are destination theme and source formatting with the link icon. And then this last one is picture. So picture is not great because obviously keeps it with a white background, which is not white one in this case. So instead I'm going to paste it and let's see the options between the source and destination. So source formatting will have it gray, which isn't great, right? Because now you're seeing gray on black, but destination theme keeps it white because it knows that I have a black background, so that works better. So link data is a pretty good option a lot of the time. So if I do use destination themes and link data, that's probably what I want to use here. And then let me make it a bit bigger. So click on that, use my make text bigger shortcut here as well. So I can format it all I want and it stays linked. So now, for example, if I change Spain to be, for example, uh, 58, that is linked there. I can also close the PowerPoint file and then change a number in Excel and let's see what happens. So now I'm back in my PowerPoint. I can see that Germany hasn't updated. It's 38 and 32. But what I can do is I can go to chart and refresh data. And now it does update. And from PowerPoint, I go to chart design and edit data. It will open up. It says linked data like this. And it has this warning. This data is linked to an Excel spreadsheet. Changes made here will be saved to that spreadsheet. So I'm going to exit out that link. It says link data. Um, now I can have some uh, cell here. I can do virtually anything that I want in here. And if I click this button, it takes me to the Excel workbook file. Over here, this is a linked file. As soon as it opens up, you see that it does take the changes that I saved. And I can also edit it here. And now, if I edit it to 30 for Germany, it does edit in real time. If I choose select data, it will also open up the same linked workbook. And I can, it takes me directly to choose where it, the data source is. A lot of people don't know you can do this in Excel, but you can select some data, go to insert and choose a map chart. And it does this sort of chloropleth map that fills up each one according to the number there. You can even right click it and choose to format data series, map area, only regions with data. I have another video where I talk more about these, but I really love these. The other thing you can do with them is have them showing categorical stuff. If you hold down control and select non-adjacent columns there, insert map, same thing. It just shows you color-wise what tourism, manufacturing versus farming is. Again, format data series, map area, only regions with data, much better. So from here, I can click on this chart and I can copy it, control C. Let's go into a new slide and paste it, control V. Then in control, I only get three options. Use destination theme, keep source formatting or paste this picture. Paste this picture does what I showed you. Not static doesn't do anything. The other two are actually linking it. So if I go here and I paste and from here, I choose to go to edit data. I have refresh, same as last time. That will then open up this linked spreadsheet. Same experience as we have before. It says it is linked. So if you go to file, info, and then you choose edit links to files. 
This is really, really important. This only shows up after you've saved the file. If you haven't saved, you won't see this. Click on edit links to file. And I can see that I actually have the first one that I have, which is Excel 2020 workbook. Uh, then I have the map chart, where does it go? And that is actually twice because I copied and pasted the chart twice. From here, I can choose to break the link and then it will show me as null, break it here as well. Or control Z doesn't actually work in that instance. And then I go here and I choose to the, go to this chart and none of these work. They're all grayed out now. But this one is still working because I didn't do anything with that link. So info again, edit links to files. I can change the source and this will open up File Explorer where I can choose where my updated file is. Or I can open the source and it will open that Excel file. Update now is the same as clicking refresh. Automatic update will mean that when you reopen PowerPoint, it asks you if you want to update the link. And just to show you, if I do it from a file saved on OneDrive or SharePoint, it does use the web link, which means that it will update if another person has access to the same SharePoint or OneDrive file through the web link, then it should update on their own computer as well. So here I am in Excel, and this is why I love using this as a dashboard, and it's completely interactive. So if I click on Facebook, I can see the data for Facebook. I can click on this singer and see it for there. I can select multi like that. Um, this is a timeline. I have another video where I show how to make these interactive dashboards in Excel. Uh, so check that out. That's how you can clear the filter. But let's look at how to replicate multiple charts and a dashboard in PowerPoint that is interactive. Um, so what you can do is you can select objects and this includes a table and a couple of charts like that. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to right click and copy it. And then back in PowerPoint, I'm going to add a new slide and I'm going to paste. Now, if I paste Control-V, I effectively get the objects as sort of standalone objects like this with the Excel grid. It's not very nice, it does them all like that. The way that it's pasted these is as a linked object. If I go to File and Info again, I can choose Edit Links to Files. And I see that it's actually taken multiple links, which is not really what I want. It's not really great. So this one is not editable, not linked to the file at all, even though the charts are. So the other way to do it is new slide control M. I'm going to do paste and choose paste special. And I want to paste a link like this. Microsoft Excel workbook object is actually a specific type of link that is available here. Press OK. And you get it showing like this which now has sort of the formatting-ish. I mean, I have a black background. It was made to be with a white background. So what I can do is I can draw a white shape behind it, that white and no outline. And then I can send it to the back like this. That looks a lot better. And now it is linked. So this is now a shape to PowerPoint. And if I go here, it does actually link them. So it is changing in here. You can see the charts are changing next to it as well. So that is how you can get kind of slices to work in there. Now, if I do the same with the slices, the slices won't be live. So if I take this and I copy it and I add here a new slide and I paste special from here and I choose paste link. I can see that the slices are there, but they are not clickable. They're not interactive. I can click them from here and I see that they do change in here, but they're not clickable. Um, finally, let's see what happens to the links file info. If I go to edit links to files, it has all of these um, because I showed you that for the demo. But for this one, it's taken the range of cells. So this is row 68 column one to row 98 column 13. And just to show you from here, 68 to 98, perfect. And column one to column 13. It doesn't use the letters, it uses the row and column numbers. Well, you can't have the slices that are clickable in PowerPoint, but what you can do is you can just 
pretend. Copy that and then here you can control V and then here press control and you can just paste it as a picture using this option. And from the picture, if you right click it, you can choose link. In older versions of PowerPoint, it will say hyperlink, but here it will say link. So for this link, you can link it back to your Excel file. <laughs> so if I'm in Excel and I just sort of show this as my screen and I save it on this view, close it. Then over here, they can do that in slideshow mode, shift F5, and then this shows up. And then it opens up that Excel file. So here's the Excel file. And from here, I can see it like that. Now you might say, well, how can I make the Excel file look a little bit more like uh, slideshow mode? You can actually hide a lot of these things. So what I can do is I can go to the view option and I can untick grid lines, formula bar and headings. I can then go to file options and I can choose in advance that I don't want to see in display. I don't want to see horizontal vertical scroll bar and the sheet tabs. Press OK. That gets rid of them there. And then I can even get rid of all this stuff. If I use the shortcut Control Shift F1, that gets rid of all of that. And then if I save it, to show you that again, after it's saved, I click on this and it will open up the Excel file just like this. So with none of the extra Chrome around it, it'll just be quite a clean viewing experience that allows people to still watch your slides whilst you're in slideshow mode. What I will say though, is that PowerPoint presentations don't need as much stuff. So one chart, try to have one point for one chart. If you're showing them it in a slide, then that means that it should be as clean as possible as you need it to happen. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy it and PowerPoint on a blank slide. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste and I get different paste options. The most basic one, if I just hit paste is this one. Um, you get these design ideas. I'm going to exit out of them. Uh, the truth is it does a pretty bad job. I mean, I hate the default paste options for tables. It has gotten rid of all my colors, which just makes it a really ugly table. The other thing that it does, and I don't know why it does this, is that it doesn't give me any gap between the start of the cell and there. Usually there's a natural gap that forms. So even if I was to make this bigger in the home tab, so even if I was to make this bigger, so even if I was to select this all and make this bigger using one of my favorite shortcuts like that, it's just way too squashed. You get a natural kind of tiny but significant gap between it. But in this table, you just don't. So it's not great. Um, also, you can change the layout. It's kind of the same ish, but you've still got that no gap there. And that's hard to do unless you then adjust it manually, unfortunately. So next, we're going to look at some other options. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to here, going to paste it now. When you paste it, you get this control thing that appears down here. This is embed. This is then a picture and this is keep text only. So keep text only just kind of puts it as text boxes with tabs used in between, not a table. You can also choose to have it as a picture and a picture means that there's absolutely nothing you can do. You cannot edit it or double click or have it linked. There's nothing you can do for this. It's got those ugly filters, which are not very useful when you have them here as well. And then you have the option to embed. So embed control V allows you to have it like this. Uh, not great when you use this style and it's not got a white background, but it still kind of works. You still do have these filters, but because I'm embedded, I've actually put in a copy of the Excel workbook within here. And to prove that, let me go to my file explorer. So if I, from here, press F12 to the save as menu, and then put that over to one side, I can see that this file is 67 kilobytes. That's because I haven't saved it yet. If I exit out of that and I save the file, so control S to save, then I press F12 to see the size, I can see that now it's jumped to two megabytes. And that is because now the entire Excel file is nested within there. Now, how do you activate that? It's not incredibly obvious. What you need to do is double click 
on the table. And you get this that pops up. And then if you have Excel open, it will show you this. Office has blocked a potential security concern. I can press enable and then it will actually open up an Excel spreadsheet within my PowerPoint like this. I don't particularly like this um, method at all, actually. It has, as you can see, got multiple tabs. I can do all of my Excel actions within this, which can be a bit confusing, but it is an embedded workbook. That's why the file size went up. I can, for example, here, take off my filter buttons in the data tab by clicking there. We said we didn't like those. Then I click out of it and I get it appearing there. If I double click it again, I can change these numbers to 80, for example, click outside, and now it's changed like that. There's an embedded option, which uh, you can do with tables and charts. Another way to um, show interactive clickable slices is to embed it using Power BI. Uh, I have loads of videos on Power BI. I love the tool, but what you can do is you can publish this on a website, maximize that, and then all of the things are clickable. So you can click, it's a very neat experience. You can click on these slices, but you can also click on any chart that becomes in itself a slicer as well. So I was using Power BI. I have another video that I'll link to for this. All right, so that is the different options that you have for embedding Excel into PowerPoint for tables, charts, and entire dashboards, and then how to link it using the hack that I showed. If you like this video, then I have plenty more on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Teams, Outlook. Feel free to click the subscribe button 